You know, I used to really kind of hate this machine and that's part of the reason that I've only ever made one video on it. But in the meantime, I've started using it again and I've added some modifications and now I'm having quite some fun using this Lapavoni Professional machine. And so today I wanna show you the modifications that I did in my current workflow to actually get a good espresso out of this machine. So let's just get right on into it and talk about the modifications. So I've got this bottomless porta filter here and I bought this from Coffee Sensor over there in Romania. They make beautiful equipment. I've got an IMS basket in there. I can fit 12 grams of ground coffee beans in there. So that is update number one so that I can see what I'm doing and I got the visual feedback right away. That's super nice. Another thing is I was having quite the issue with this overheating and that's kind of one of the ergonomic things I don't like as much about the La Pavoni is that the boiler obviously gets super hot and so does the base. Like everything gets hot and you have to be careful. So it's not exactly a machine for like in a household with toddlers or to bring to work necessarily. You gotta be a little careful but the brew group was overheating. So I did two things about that. The first one is I got a bong isolator here. So that's basically just a bridge or a gap here in between the brew group and the boiler itself. So that way it keeps the brew group from overheating. Very important. And I noticed right away a lot of improvement there. The second thing that's really helpful is that I've got a temperature strip right here. So with the temperature strip, I can see where the brew group is at. Now I find that when the brew group is right around 75 degrees Celsius, that's when I pull really nice shots. So that's what I've done. I've also installed, you can see it here, a nicer steam tip here on the steam one. So this allows me to get closer to microphone. I'm still not able to get microphone with this machine, but it's closer. And uh, so those are the main modifications that I've done. And with a bit of practice, I've been able to get some mm, delightful shots. From it. Now, a couple of other things to keep in mind with the workflow are, first of all, when you're pulling a shot, you wanna lift the lever up as far as you can before inserting the porta filter. So I'll lift it up about that high before inserting it so that that way I don't create a vacuum. That way I also seem to get actually more volume in my shot, which is nice. Another thing that I had to do was increase the threshold on the presso stat underneath the machine. I was like at 0.4 bar for some reason. I was able to increase it to just over one bar and that has also made quite the difference. When you're first starting up the machine, by the way, you do have to release that fake pressure. I'm gonna do that now and then let it heat back up. And once it's heated back up, you're ready to go. So one of the advantages of this machine that I have quite grown to like is that it's almost silent. You can hear the boiler is boiling and that is really the only sound it makes. There's no pump involved. So no annoying vibratory pump sound, not even a rotational pump. It all happens here. First of all, pushing the water from the one bar pressures water here in the boiler into the brew group. And then when you're pressing down on the lever, you're probably getting right around eight or nine bar. And all that is just by the force you put on it yourself. So that's nice. It's a quiet machine. You could actually, if you wanted, Try to use this if you're talented enough as a dual boiler machine. You could push a shot down and you could steam at the same time because these two things are separate. But anyway, let's just make ourselves a shot and see how it looks. Okay, so another thing that I nearly forgot to mention is that you do need a finer grind on your beans for the La Pavoni than you need for a normal espresso machine, a normal pump machine. So I normally run this King Grinder K4 at about 60 clicks, but for the La Pavoni, I'm running it at 54. It's finer. So let's measure out 12 grams of beans. There we go. And I'm just gonna give them a spritz, not to be fancy, but because sometimes these beans are just a little bit staticky going through this hand grinder, and this makes it easier to get the beans out. So let's go ahead, put these beans in there. Zip. Take my slick little WDT tool that I've got here and just make sure that the grounds are distributed nice. So we have got a nice puck here. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna lift this up just before that valve opens and slide that in there. Then I'm going to lift up the lever all the way. You'll hear it start to fill up and let it pre-infuse.
The shot I got before, the very first one was just unbelievably tasty, velvety, really thick chocolate notes. It was like thick on the tongue. This is also, but this one is not quite as balanced as the first one. The first one didn't really have any bitterness, just a little astringency. This one has got certainly more bitterness to it, if I'm being honest. But that's just kind of the thing, you know, it's not always consistent. It depends on the pressure that you put on it, your puff preparation and everything. Yeah, this is still a very, very interesting, pretty complex shot. So I'm having a lot of fun with this machine. Now I'm gonna pull one more shot and then I'm gonna try to make a cappuccino and I'm gonna close out the video. Getting value from this video? Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Making quite the mess here with these staticky beans. Now, I think part of the reason that the second shot differed from the first one I did before the video is that I forgot this time to preheat the brew group. Now it's at 75, so I think this shot's gonna be a little different. All right, same procedure as last year. This time I'm just going to stay here. And uh, we push. Ooh, it looks like liquid gold. Oh yeah, look at that. Very nice. I did open up the grind just one notch on that one because the first one did seem to be a little long, but yeah, that is an incredible looking shot. Just, oh, oh my goodness, velvet, velvet. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, the balance is back on this one, the taste is like it's thick on the tongue, it's velvety. There's really no astringency to talk about it all. Bittersweet chocolate is coming out. Maybe some almond flavor in there that it reminds me of, but yeah, beautiful shot. I have been having quite a bit of fun with this machine uh, and making shots. And I've even brought it to work these last couple of weeks and I work with a bunch of mechanical engineers and those guys are all about this machine. They think it's so cool, even just the looks. So yeah, it's quite a bit of fun. It's a talking piece and it's an interesting machine. What I have not been able to do yet is steam milk very well, but I'm just gonna give it a shot and see what happens in this video. I got these new glasses here from my wife. They're pretty funny. Now what I find is that the Lapavoni doesn't have a whole lot of power. So I'm gonna have to try to just do my best to steam and see what happens. Finally, it's got a lot of power. And it looks like it's churning really nicely, but I have the feeling that when you close the valve, it just introduces too much air again. So that's what we got right there. I mean, it's pretty decent, but it's still not exactly creamy. Let's see what we get here. Uh, not quite. Better. Probably the best I've done so far on the La Pavoni. All right guys, I hope this video is helpful for you. And if so, give it a like, check out my other videos. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel, it's totally free. And until next time, I say happy coffee drinking and happy cappuccino drinking. Bye now.